Have you seen me dice bag? <laughs> Grognard Files Hello, my name is Dirk the Dice, host of the Grognard Files podcast, where we talk bobbins about tabletop RPGs from back in the day and today. Episode 32 of the Grog Pod is all about KSEM's 1981 supplement, Thieves World. During the show, we open the box together to explore the contents, so I thought it would be a good idea to share them here so you could see them for yourself. Thieves World was originally conceived as a collaborative shared world created by Robert Asprin in 1978 for an anthology of stories by some of the major science fiction authors of the period, including John Brunner and Paul Anderson. There were 12 anthologies of short stories produced, several novels, comics and a board game. The background to the stories goes something like this. During a war in the mountains, there was an uprising against the rank and empire. The slaves, the body servants, galley slaves and gladiators fled to a fertile place they named Sanctuary. Before long, the resources were exploited and run down and the place of harmony became a pit of crime and scallywags, hidden in the remote backwater of the empire. The Emperor of Rankin exiles his ambitious stepbrother Cadikippus to the god-forsaken place. On his arrival, he intends to drive law and order with his fearsome troop of soldiers known as the Hellhounds. It's a place made for adventure, so a perfect location for role-playing scenarios. Little wonder that Greg Stafford of Chaosium approached Rob Asprin for a license to create a supplement. The cover by Victoria Poiser invites you to adventure, to come and sit at the table of the Volga Unicorn. It's like Caravaggio supper at Imaeus, but with terrible 70s haircuts. This was a point where Chaosium had a tremendous portfolio of products. All of them produced an amazing standard. This supplement that was licensed for nine different systems was truly groundbreaking. There's a sense that Chaosium was reaching out to players of other games, like D&D, to show them what they had available, to see what they were missing. This full colour catalogue is worth the price of the box set alone. Here, there's a call-out box pointing out that basic role-playing is a unified system. Learn one and you can play them all. The player's guide is a booklet of common knowledge that players would know about Sanctuary. The emphasis of the setting is understanding the different factions and personalities. Paul Anderson's essay, Thud and Blunder, says that you need grit beneath the magic and glamour so there's more of a similitude. This booklet tries to do it by giving the city a sense of history with personalities. It's a place teeming with mundane life as well as the promise of adventure. The notes in the glossary are great and are enough to seed adventure ideas on their own. For example, qualis, a plant that's a basis for a fine red liquor, or a love potion. Mmm, that gets you thinking, doesn't it? We had some fun with these oaths on the back using them as exclamations throughout the game. You're only supposed to use one, our games master protested. Rereading the books now, it's striking that the essential ingredient is the characters, who offer a degree of continuity to the stories. Characters like Jubal, the exotic crime boss depicted here. There's brief thumbnail depiction as well as a note of the stories that they appear in for most of the favourites. I liked Hans Shadowspawn because he had a cool name, but there's Tempest Fails and of course Akim, the storyteller, whose middle name is Exposition. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons has been converted by Lawrence Stick. Ines Jarl uses magic objects, while Misereth 
manipulates charms, and the Blue Star Order has different magic than the Purple Mage. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons cannot cope with such inconsistency, so he suggests that you just make something up. The number of systems covered in this book reflects the explosion in publishing in the late 70s, like this one from Dave Arneson, Adventures in Fantasy. He provides the conversion here with co-author Richard Snyder. In his introduction to the chivalry and sorcery characters, Wes Ives sounds less than convinced about the adaptation. He stripped out lots of the complexity by smoothing out the edges and ignoring the eccentricities. Eric Goldberg, on the other hand, goes hog wild with Dragon Quest, not only grokking the magic system and recreating the NPCs, but providing guidance on how to create player characters and other personalities. SPI's Dragon Quest was one of our favourites, so it's good to see it gain prominence here. Dungeons and Dragons are just the character listings. The text is squeezed out by trademark and registration disclaimers. There's room for the recently reprinted Fantasy Trip, which is a surprisingly awkward conversion given that it's relatively rules light. Ruddy Craft says that one minor issue is having to convert all of the maps so that they're on a hex grid. Hmm. For RuneQuest, Steve Perrin not only does the mechanical conversion, but he also finds equivalents with Gloranthan cults. Thulfur is Isaris, for example. The stats blocks also include gods and monsters. Vashanka has a lightning bolt at 100% with 10d6 damage. Traveller is a surprising addition to the supplement. Mark Miller concocts a variety of predictable rationale for slotting the fantasy and magic of Sanctuary into your science fiction campaign. Ken St. Andre gives a typically ebullient introduction to the Tunnels and Trolls stats and demonstrates his personal enthusiasm for the Thieves World Literary Project and an understanding of the setting. He encourages you to read the books, create your own characters and stories, write up your adventures and send them to Robert Asprin. And you never know. You never know. At the back, there's some useful resources, a supplementary character sheet for your player characters to add sanctuary personality and some eye-catching scenario hooks. Depending on the location in the city and the time of day, there's a series of encounter tables to generate adventures. There's also a method of generating businesses to populate the city. There's a number of floor plans for some of the key locations in the city. Many are fairly generic and can be applied in a multiple adventures. The Volga Unicorn is of course included. The highlight of these Chaosium box sets was the fold-out map. Unfurl it at your table and watch the player's imagination begin to sparkle. There's adventure everywhere here. If you want to find out more, make sure you listen to the podcast at thegrognardfiles.com. Adios, amigos. Have you seen me dice bag? <laughs>
The Grognard Files.